35, Yale nothing at the end of the first half. Uh, Yale, Yale kicker just missed another, another field goal attempt from about 45, 50 yards. And uh, Yale has been blank in the first half. So you can see them running out the field there. It's, it's all red so far. And, uh, you know, we're really happy to see this. Uh, all of our predictions look like they get blown out of the water. Because Jeff Matthews is absolutely um, the best player to ever set foot on a football field. And really, you know, Joe Montana, Tom Brady, Dan Marino, et cetera. I'm not even going to list all you guys. Like, you need to bow to Jeff Matthews because he is the best ever. Um, anyway, Chris is running away to do something. So is Allie. So I'm here with Joe. And I'm here with Dan and DeWalker. We'll see if Dan and DeWalker are standing in the main teams. But, um, Joe, what did you think of that first half? Well, we all expected Big Red to come out throwing and to put up a lot of points. They've exceeded our expectations, even our expectations. But it is, you know, on par with what we were thinking. I, however, am really surprised with the defense. We thought it was going to be a shootout. The defense has come out strong, really laid down the gauntlet and said, you know, we're not just an offensive team here. We play defense, too. Try and score on us. And Yale cannot do that. I mean, of course, Yale might just shock. Yale does look bad. But, yes, this is a full team effort. We were expecting half a team to show up today. It's a full red team. Yes. Best team in a, a decade. Yes. Yeah. Cornell, Cornell looks great so far. Um, let's see. Dan and Dan and DeWalker, do you have any comments? Dan. Dan has no comments. DeWalker. Surprisingly, we're winning by a lot. Yeah. That's all. Okay, that's all we're going to get from DeWalker, I think. Um, yeah, uh, Cornell's played really well so far. Uh, Matt, the offense has been pretty much everything we expected, except that they've been a little more balanced. They've been more successful running plays, uh, some good short passes, screen passes from Matthews. Uh, Matthews, again, has been fantastic. Um, and the defense, as Joe said, has been excellent. Uh, forcing, forcing turnovers and, you know, forcing, forcing Yale to punt a bunch of times. Yale probably should have six points on the board from a couple of field goal attempts, but they don't because their kicker is not very good. Um, our kicker really hasn't been forced to do anything. It's just been extra points for him. It's been all red so far. Here's to uh, more of the same in the second half. We should mention, we should mention that Cornell has taken advantage of two Yale turnovers inside their own 20. Yeah. Two interceptions. Or no, an interception no. and a and a muff punt. And a muff punt. Plus there was another interception. Cornell has And it was a turnover on, uh, and it was a uh, turn that down. missed field goal Cornell's which resulted in a turnover on down. Well, that is, Cornell has uh, turned that into, those two turnovers inside the 20 into 14 points, so that is huge. Yeah. Yale will receive the ball um, at the beginning of the second half, but given the way Cornell defense has been playing, uh, we probably won't have too much to worry about when they do get the ball. That's all, at least for now, for halftime from Shoal Cup Field, uh, Cornell Homecoming 2012. The Red lead the Bulldogs of Yale 35 to nothing. Another Cornell touchdown, Matthews to Tasker. And quite frankly, if the Yale secondary is going to keep playing like this, I think we should try to score 70. Um, he was basically all wide open in the end zone. There was nobody for like five yards around him. And it was an easy, easy throw uh, for Matthews. Uh, and it is 42 to nothing red with three and three quarter minutes left in the third quarter. The touchdown comes a few plays after it should have. There was a very bad pass interference call against Yale on what should have been a touchdown because the college rules was not a spot foul. Cornell had to put his, run a few extra plays, but we got the touchdown, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would have been a touchdown. It was about, the pass interference was about the five yard line. But, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's still, still all Cornell. Yale's, um, Yale's had to punt a couple times so far in the second half, and they really don't look like creating any uh, any chance of scoring at all. all right, Yale has scored their first uh, touchdown of the game with uh, seven sec seconds remaining in the uh, third quarter. It is uh, basically irrelevant at this point. It was a short pass from about the four-yard line in the left corner of the end zone. And, uh, there's really no way that Yale's going to come back anyway. Uh, 
Uh, it was on fourth down, and for some reason they tried to go for two. I'm not sure what the point of that was, but it didn't work. So it's Cornell 42, Yale 6 with 7 seconds. No, 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 no. What, what that was, what that two-point conversion was, was hilarious. Yeah. And I believe they did it to entertain the now-growing board Cornell crowd. Yeah, I think Joe's right. Um, and ruined my revised prediction of 49-7. to <laughs> Yeah, it's unlikely they'd be able to score one point at this I, stage. It clearly, clearly, it was okay. despite Chris. Yeah, exactly. Isn't the drop kick worth one point? I don't know. Maybe We're not that, sure what's going on. Maybe, maybe that's how Kentucky scored one point, yeah. according to my we, uh, my phone. Yeah, we saw that well, Florida was up 17 to 1 over Kentucky earlier, so we weren't sure how that was possible. We'll have to go, do a rules check before no. the end of the game. Got into the red zone again, got down to the five, but was uh, stopped and kicked field goal. It's 45 to six. Cornell's field goal kicker there was showing them how it's done, how to kick a field goal from short distance. Uh, Yale has not learned that lesson, obviously. Yes. So we'll see if maybe they take a cue and get a field goal next time. Yeah, they'd have to kick a lot of field goals from here on out, though, to have any chance of winning the game. Right. It's, it's over, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's about eight and a half minutes left. Uh, so we've just seen a display of spectacular mental incompetence on the part of the uh, Yale University Bulldogs. Uh, Cornell was punting from uh, inside its own 20, and uh, pretty bad it was, punt. It didn't was a bad punt. It, it didn't, no, it didn't cross the 50, and one of the Yale players brushed the punt, uh, which meant it was a live ball, and Cornell jumped on it. So we have first first down for Cornell uh, with about a minute and a half left from uh, just inside our half the field. The best part so it's a final here at Cholkop Field as the sun comes out over the crescent. Uh, Cornell has won the homecoming, uh, 45 to 6 over the Bulldogs of Yale. Uh, a magnificent performance by the Cornell offense and defense as well. I think all of us were very surprised by the defensive performance. It was very good from the five-time national champion Big Red. And uh, we're here again with Joe. Some final comments on the game, Joe. But first of all, I'd like to point out. I thought it was fairly uh, inane of Yale to call three timeouts when we were trying to run out the clock and make us punt and then and uh, try to run a last play with one run second a left last on the clock. play. Yeah. I, I don't know what they were doing. The game was over. But anyway, this game was a statement game for Cornell. Opening game lost to Yale. So what, have they the stated? Game what have they stated, Joe? They say we are not the same, Cornell. They have put the Ivy League on notice. On notice, the Ivy League yeah, the rest is on of the, the Ivy on League notice board. Notice, and we want Bucknell next weekend. Bucknell. We're coming for you. We are coming for you, Bucknell University. All right. But, uh, yes, an excellent performance by Cornell. Jeff Matthews, magnificent uh, in the passing game. As Allie may or may not have something to say to me. Allie, you have anything to say on the game? Uh, it was awesome. I think it's the first time I've ever seen Cornell play. Really? Yeah. All right. Lauren, sports editor of the Cornell Daily Sun. Any comments? Well played, boys. Well played. Well played, boys. We can all, I think we can all agree with that. She's saving, she's saving her analysis for the paper. Ah, uh, yeah. She's trying to make you, trying to make all of us go out and well get the paper right. on Monday. Got to sell those copies, right? Sell all those, those sell no, those no, newspapers. No, no, no. Soccer. I'm soccer. We're, we're heading off to soccer, but it's uh, uh, overall an excellent performance by Cornell. The defense was um, far better than expected. Um, and uh, Yale's special teams were quite poor. Uh, they muffed a couple of punts, and uh, the kicker didn't seem to know when to call a fair catch. Uh, good showing by the Cornell faithful. Uh, Crescent was more full than it usually is, even for homecoming. And a great way to celebrate the 125th anniversary of Cornell football. 